Hello there, Scott Parody here. Today, I want to talk to you about the almighty dollar. Can you define a dollar? So I challenge you, next time you're out with friends or coworkers and you're at the bar, this would be a good drinking game. The drinking game would be ask a friend or your friends to define the dollar. What is a dollar? Can you define a dollar? If they answer in an abstraction, that is not a tangible thing, some sort of abstraction, everybody drinks. It's going to be a drink, great drinking game, I'll tell you. It could go very south very quickly. What the heck is a dollar? What is the almighty dollar? What does this represent? If you look up, Google it, or look up what, go to the Fed or the U.S. government, what is the dollar? Well, it is the official currency of the United States. Well, what the heck does that mean? A currency is a... It facilitates exchange. So it's something, well, really not a thing. It's an abstract notion, an idea. It's a bright idea to facilitate exchange, exchange of value. So the dollar is a medium of exchange, unit of account, store of value. Well, Okay, so what does that mean? It's kind of an, an extraction, right? You think of it as this paper currency, as something real. Well, it's not real. This is just paper with some ink on it and some drawings. Well, what the heck does that mean? Well, we've got a couple of trillion of these, that is paper currency in singles, fives, tens, twenties, or the Benjamins, which are the most popular of all, got a couple of trillion of all of these plus coins in total dollars in circulation. But how much money is out there? Well, when you look at all the money, U.S. dollars that we consider to be U.S. dollars, we're talking around $21 trillion, nowhere near the amount of what you would call a tangible currency, which is just pieces of paper. 21 trillion units of what we call a dollar. Well, units of what? Remember, it's an abstraction. It's a bright idea. That's nothing more than a bright idea, which is a social construct. It's a bright idea to help facilitate the exchange of value. That's all it is. So when you're trying to earn some money, well, what you're doing is you're earning units of abstract value. What does that mean? Well, what does this abstract value represent? Well, it represents products and services, products and services that you want or need. So that's the demand side of the equation. On the supply side are those resources or products and services that are available to have an economic exchange with someone that you can use these dollars. But the dollars just represent a temporary transfer. So the dollars are really debt instruments. We are using a fiat currency system. Back in the day when money was hardbacked, and by hardbacked, it was a commodity money. The commodity money most widely used a couple hundred years ago were precious metals, gold and silver. When in the, in the time of the American Revolution, the founding fathers conceived of money principally in the value of silver. So at the time of the writing of the Constitution, it was about 375 grains of silver was what a dollar represented. So a single dollar was in real value, was the equivalent of about 375 grains of silver. Well, in the Coinage Act of 1792, which was our first real publication of what we defined as a dollar, it was revised to 371 plus grains of silver was what a dollar was. So 371 grains of silver. And then as we went into the 19th century, we expanded into gold. And so we had gold and silver, we had a bimetallic standard. But it, eventually uh, we, we broke away from the gold, the metallic standards a couple of times in the civil war. And then as we moved into the 20, 20th century, Eventually, in 1971, we severed any reference at all to metallic backing, and we went completely to a fiat currency, 
fiat currency, currency by declaration. In this case, the government says this is a dollar. It's used, it can be used for all debts, public and private. It can be used for the payment of taxes. So as long as we, you and I, all agree that we can use this little symbol here in in whatever denomination we determine, we can use this to pay our debts, public and private. It is still just a social agreement. Remember, it's an abstraction. If you're playing that drinking game, if somebody comes up with an abstraction, then drink because that's all it is. Money is a pure abstraction. It's a bright idea. And like any bright idea, this is just a tool, a tool to facilitate the exchange of real value. The real value is in the form of products and services. This is what you're doing at work as you're providing a product or service that someone hopefully values enough to pay for. Pay for giving you a debt instrument, which then gets passed along so that they can pick up something of real value down the road. Always just a debt instrument. This is nothing of value. It's only value because we say it is. And it's the temporary value of this getting passed on to a tangible asset, something that has real value that can produce something. So where do we go with all of this from an abstraction to a reality? The abstraction is money is a bright idea. That's nothing more. It's a bright idea for, to facilitate exchange. Well, what is the foundation of this? Trust. Trust. We have to trust in this medium of exchange. What do we have to trust? We have to trust the medium. So whatever we collectively agree on, we're going to use as the medium of exchange. But then we have to trust the system that the system will function in a fair and honest way. Mm, uh, that's questionable, but we'll go with it. So we'll trust that it, tr that it operates in a fair and honest way. And then we've got to trust that other people are going to play by the rules that we have collectively made this game up to. And they're going to continue to contribute to the economic system. That's how the whole engine works. This abstraction is trust. It's a trust vehicle. It's a vehicle of trust whereby we trust that if we create value, we can bring the value to the marketplace and other people can exchange value to with us so that we have a mutually beneficial exchange system. That's our economy. That's our economic system. That is what the almighty dollar is meant to facilitate. However, I mentioned this is a tool. This is a tool to facilitate, ideally facilitate economic exchange. It is a tool to empower people. However, like every tool, you can apply it well or you can apply it poorly. It can be used for good purposes, productive, prosperous purposes. This is what our economy is meant to do, what I've referred to as the making game that we are all playing. That is when we connect, collaborate, and create and bring real value to the marketplace. We are creating something of value. That is how we create wealth. Then we exchange it with one another using this tool, this medium of exchange that helps facilitate the exchange of real value, something we created. That's a positive use of the dollar. People are empowered by using this tool to help facilitate the exchange of value. But the tool can be used negatively as well. It can be used to harm people. So what are we talking about here? The dollar is an incentive. It's an incentive because we empower it. So what happens is when we start the economic exchange system, you have something of value, I have something of value, we trade that value. Then we come up with a bright idea of money to help facilitate trade. So we use the trust vehicle of dollars in this case, and we trust the dollars to facilitate the exchange. So I don't have to look into your background. I don't have to know you. I can just trust this medium that you're using. So all I'll do is take those dollars in exchange. I give you whatever it is. I take the dollars, but then I know I trust this, this medium of exchange. I'll use them to get something of real value. All works extremely well. Trust, right? Trust. Go back to your abstract values of what the heck is a dollar. Dollar is just a trust vehicle. But in the negative, it's an incentive to help us facilitate this exchange. From a negative perspective, it is an incentive that can control and manipulate people in a negative way. What do I mean by that? What I mean is the people with the money, because we have empowered money, we have made money the most saleable of all things. Again, it's an abstraction, but we consider it a thing. And so everybody who covets money, we want money. We're not worried anymore about creating, connecting, creating, connecting, 
collaborating, creating value. We're now worried about how do I get money? What I really care about is money because that's how I get everything. Well, if everyone just does that, we're all just chasing money and we're not creating anything constructive in our economy and we all lose. But some pretty cunning people recognize, hey, everyone's chasing money. So if I have money, I can control what they do. This is the negative side of us empowering money, that abstraction, that bright idea. Once we empower that bright idea, it is a good tool, but it also has some bad uses as well. So the bad use is that it becomes a tool for control. It's an incentive, but it's a negative incentive in this way. In this way, I can use, I can hire people to do anything I want, and much of it cannot be good. You see what I'm saying here? So money, the almighty dollar, it's an abstraction. It's not real. Most of it is in digits on a computer. It's just an electronic on or off switch. That's all it is. We agree that it's there because of our system. We all agree to it, but it's an abstraction. And it's often misused because we've given it to certain people who have control of that money. Therefore, they control who gets the dollars and therefore can incentivize the activity. Most people don't realize that, have no clue that that's happening. But we still have some trust in a system. But recognize that system, that these dollars can be used for good, connect, collaborate, create, everyone prospers, or for bad. They can become an incentive that ultimately controls people. All right. I'll just back one final abstraction for you, since we're talking all these abstract principles. Value. I've mentioned value a couple of times. You say value. Value is always subjective, right? We have certain physiological needs that have to be met. But then beyond that, we get into our individualized wants and needs, which are very broad and very diverse. Oftentimes, they are influenced, though, by those around us. That's with keeping up with the Joneses, right? What We want what other people have. We ascribe certain value to certain things. In this case, we use money, this abstract tool, to affix a dollar or a or mathematical count to what the value will be. This is why it's a unit of an account. The dollar is a unit of account. Well, how do we get to that value? Ultimately, that value is people doing productive things. All wealth is the product of people doing productive things. We can go on for this, this discussion in quite a bit of depth, but I'm going to leave it at that. So all value is the result of human beings doing something productive, constructive, helping other people in some way. So this dollar, what it ultimately represents is a trust vehicle. And what you are trusting in is other people can be used for good, can be used for bad, but it only and always represents people's time, energy, and effort. The dollar is an abstract representation of time, energy, and effort. Human beings, real live people, the energy and effort of real live people. That is what the almighty dollar represents. Real live people doing things. That is what the dollar is. So think about that next time you take out a dollar out of your wallet or write a check or put your credit card somewhere. It represents somebody somewhere doing something. That is what the almighty dollar is. So think about that and begin to use it for positive, constructive purposes only. The more we do that, the better off we all will be. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know what you think. Share this video. Give me some comments. Give me, send me a message. And uh, I will see you again soon.